Hello everyone. This is a, a part two video on uh, fixing your washing machine when you're getting the suds error code and your washing machine is not draining properly or at all. I have already made uh, my first video which became quite popular and got lots of great feedback from people who were able to fix their machine by following that video's steps on cleaning out various components of your washer that might be clogged up with gunk or debris, coins, etc. More than likely that would be the fix. I encourage you to watch that first video step by step and perform those those procedures. If you've gotten to the point where that didn't fix your problem or you know for sure your pump is dead and you need a new one, then uh, I'm making this video as I'm changing my own pump. I'm going to go through exactly how to do so and which pump to buy. Again, as in the first video, we're dealing with a Kenmore HE3 Elite. First step, whether you have this exact model or something similar, will be to remove the bottom panel with my specific Kenmore there's three screws, one second in the middle, and a third. You can remove them with a Phillips head screw driver or a seven millimeter hex nut. Once you have the front panel removed, here you'll see the coin catch and the drain pump, all right there. The next step before removing the pump will be to drain any water that's sitting inside the coin catch. Uh, there's a few ways to do that, and some will recommend tilting the machine back and uh, placing it up on blocks. Even with doing that, once you unscrew the hatch from the coin catch, water will flow out and flow back, drip down, back into the machine. The best way to do this and avoiding having to prop the machine up on blocks is what I'll show you now. I like the hard way, not having removed the coin catch before draining, I had water run down into my machine and all across the floor, causing a big mess. But with this method, you remove one screw at the bottom of the coin catch. It's a, a T20, Torx 20 screw. There's one rubber footing on the left side. one down on the right side, right here. It's just a matter of tilting the coin catch back and sliding forward. The footing will come forward into a bigger recess, allowing you to pull up and pull it out. And then your coin catch and pump, the complete assembly is free. Next step is to unclip this plastic frame holding holding the wiring. It's just a push clip from in behind with some your fingers or some pliers. You release that on both sides. That allows you more headroom to pull the coin catch out from beneath the washing machine. And most importantly, allowing you to tilt it down see that tilt will allow all the water to flow out of the coin catch directly into uh, a glass pyrex or any shallow dish you're able to place underneath even with propping the machine up to allow room for a pyrex underneath with the pump sitting in place locked into its footings it's not angled properly the water will flow out of that coin catch at quite an alarming rate as well uh, and running back down along the grooves of the, the bottom tray 
all the way back towards the rear of the machine and all over your floor. So, panels removed, you unscrew the one Torx 20 screw and wiggle free the footings. Unclipping the plastic harness and you're ready, you're ready to drain. Now with the Pyrex in place, it's simply a matter of tilting the coin catch and unscrewing the hatch. Now, if you completely unscrew the hatch, the water will gush out, as I said, at quite an alarming rate. So the great thing about this hatch is that you can control the flow by slowly unscrewing until you get the desired water flow. You allow the Pyrex to fill up. Once it's full, you can screw close the hatch, drain the Pyrex, and repeat for as many fills as necessary to completely empty uh, the water from the machine. My machine is, uh, is empty. If you catch your machine in the middle of a suds error code and, and the tub is full of water and your clothes are sitting in a wet puddle of water, well, you'll have a lot more water coming out of the catch. It may take you about seven or eight fills of the Pyrex before you're completely empty and you no longer have any water. In my case, I can completely unscrew the hatch because the flow isn't too heavy. And with just one Pyrex fill, I've emptied the, uh, the washer. So if that's your case where you're simply removing the pump with an empty washer, that's all you'll have. If you're in the middle of a suds error code in your machine, your tub is still full of water, you may have multiple empties of the Pyrex. As you see, this is a great method. I didn't even require any towels down. There's absolutely no spillage and no mess. Before proceeding with removal of the pump, I'd be remiss if I didn't encourage you uh, one more time to go ahead and watch my first video, which details cleaning out uh, your washing machine, the drain hoses, and uh, the coin catch. Just requires a pair of pliers, would have been better, sound much easier if you might have a bent nose pliers, but a regular standard pair of pliers will be enough. And about 20 minutes of your time, since you've already gotten this far and your coin catch and washer basin is dry, emptied out, you're, you're halfway there to completely cleaning out your uh, entire machine and that might alone have been the cause of your, your F02 problem. Possibly in conjunction with an older, weaker pump uh, that might need replacing, but by cleaning out your machine, you may buy yourself some time. Uh, your F code, SUDS code may disappear and you can at least start doing laundry again until you receive your, your new pump or not needing to uh, order a new pump at all and then just wait until your pump actually does fail. It's more likely than not your SUDS code is being triggered by uh, a slowly draining washer due to clogged hoses and lines, which triggers the switch uh, for safety reasons to uh, shut the washer down and give you that SUDS code. So go ahead and please watch that video. Try cleaning it out and uh, let me know your comments if, if that alone helped. But uh, to proceed with pump removal, very simple just need a number two Phillips screwdriver and there's three screws. There's one right there on the left, one underneath, and one right there on the right side of the pump. Before unscrewing the pump, little door you flip up and you disconnect the wiring harness from the pump. Just 
pull the pump out just enough. No need to disconnect. No need to disconnect any of the the hoses, drain hoses, or rubber boot at the back. You can access all three screws easily. slowly wiggle it loose tilt the drain coin catch just in case like I have here a little bit of water that didn't come out from the first drain there we go a little bit of water is gone and here we're left with The pump. All right, so the pump is removed. We'll lean in and get a closer look here at the three screws. So the pump is orientated like this inside your the bottom of your washer, and there's multiple holes. I'm assuming when the pump is used for different model washers, but for this model, it's the very top screw on the left. There's only one hole at the bottom for that middle screw and it's the very top hole on the right for the third screw. And once they're unscrewed, you can pull your pump out. It's, it's sealed in there with the rubber O-ring. This is the turbine. That's what spins and that's what forces the water to drain and pump out of your machine. Now I had posted my cleaning video seven months ago and by cleaning out all the water drain hoses and rubber boots, coin catch, my machine started working perfectly again. However, this pump was loud and I suspected old enough to not be performing uh, to par. So I went ahead and purchased a new pump from Amazon. Canadian dollars was 60, uh, 60 Canadian dollars as well for shipping. So a total of 120 Canadian dollars for this pump. There are other much cheaper pumps, but they don't look the exact same as the OEM original. Um, they mount in the same place. They'll, they'll fit perfectly with the same wiring harness, but they weren't a perfect replica. So I went spent a little bit more money to get what I think after reading reviews of the cheaper pumps uh, a more stronger and uh, better performing pump. Now with my cleaning video I've been able to chat with some quite a few amazing people who've had great success cleaning out their machines. I'm so grateful that they've reached out and, and uh, shared their success uh, just like I had with cleaning out and, and fixing my suds error code but funny enough the most recent comment I had I have to give a shout out to Victor he mentioned he thanked me for the video mentioned his lines weren't that dirty but he noticed his turbine had broke free from his pump the metal shaft connected had broken free and, and that's what his problem was and he wouldn't have noticed it unless he went ahead and unscrewed the pump from the coin catch assembly that I demonstrated in my video and mine doesn't seem to have been broken free, but you can see it's compared to the brand new one. Mine used to look like this. My turbine sat flush and it was housed perfectly within the pump motor. And today I see that it's out quite a bit. It still seems to engage. I feel some tension here, but that might explain why my pump sounded a lot louder than it should. And even though I was successful with cleaning out my machine, once in a while, if I washed a very heavy blanket or a large load of bath towels, I would get the odd 
sporadic suds error code F02, which would force me to have to remove the sop and wet clothes from the puddle of water in my machine, run a uh, just a simple drain cycle, and once the, the tub basin was dry and empty, I put the wet clothes back in and, and continue on with a, with a wash cycle. And it would most of the time run smoothly that second time around, but not, needless to say a hassle and the reason why I went ahead and invested in a uh, in a new pump. So that might be a problem of yours as well as the uh, same problem Victor had where his turbine was completely free of the pump or mine that seems to be still connected to the shaft because I'm getting some spring tension when I, when I try and turn it. However, obviously protruding and, and not uh, not to spec here. So while this pump is out, get a close look at the wire connection. And I'll share the info, but what you're looking for when ordering your new pump is this number here. That's the number I typed into Google and Amazon to find a direct replacement match for, for this year pump. Also, the manufacturer of this pump is ASKOL, A-S-K-O-L. The model number is M75. And then you have all the amperage and hertz and watts specs right down below here. So that info on the back of the pump. And once it's purchased, the seller I purchased from reached out and before shipping wanted to confirm I had ordered the right pump, which I thought was, was pretty decent. Wanted me to refer this number to him. That's the model number of your washer located on the inside of the door for the, uh, for my Kenmore. It's uh, you can see there it's 110-428-22201. So using that number alone, you might be able to source out a, uh, a direct, a perfect match. Uh, for your pump using that number. All right, new pump is installed and I'm about to give it the ultimate test of washing my daughter's super thick blanket she got from Costco that I was unable to wash for her over the past seven, eight months because without fail, it would be sitting in a puddle of water halfway through the drain cycle and I'd hear the sound of death, the constant beeping of the F02 suds code coming from my basement laundry room. I'm going to throw that in here and we'll see if the cleaning process combined with a brand new pump has restored this washer its prime. Well, the wash cycle is finished. I'm pleased to announce that the new pump was much quieter than my old pump. And have a look inside at the heavy blanket. And wow, almost feels moderately dry. Holy cow, what a difference a new pump makes. I would have been happy just having no puddle of water inside the tub, but the pump works so well, drains so much water so quickly that the spin cycle really did its job and this thing feels light and moderately dry, not heavy and wet at all. So success everyone. Feel free to leave comments on uh, your success if uh, it was just a simple cleaning as uh, demonstrated in my first video or you went ahead and changed the pump. Let me know and uh, hey, if uh, you feel like subscribing to my channel, that would be awesome. A lot of it is me just uh, doing stuff like soaking in an ice bath out in my backyard and, and bike packing stuff, but I'd love to subscribe. So if you do, thank you very much. Cheers, everyone.